I'm Dan Johnson talking with two friends from the C-Max Aircraft Company. Miguel Rosario, the designer, a longtime head of the company. Shalom Confessor, who is their U.S. man, I'll say. And you have some interesting news that you want to tell me about. And that involves this particular aircraft, which has what engine in it, Miguel? Between both is the engine. This one has a 912 Rotax ULS, and the other one is the IS. It's the first one delivered with the injected one. Okay, and that one over there, you said, has quite an instrument panel in it, too. Tell me about that. Oh, yeah, we have a completely Garmin G3 with a G5 as a backup, so it's an all-glass cockpit. Wow, that's uh, almost IFR capable then with all that equipment in it, isn't it? Yeah, it's very similar with Cirrus Jet. <laughs> ah, Cirrus Jet, the Vision Jet, only even better because it goes on the water, right? That's it. That one goes to the water but cannot take off. <laughs> <laughs> very well said. <laughs> only one trip. Only one this trip. one you can make multiple trips. Well, in case you don't know, the C-Max is a, a composite fuselage, fabric wing, uh, a wonderful little flying airplane that I consider one of the performance airplanes in the light sport seaplane class. Would you agree with that assessment? Yes, I do agree with that. It's really the, the, the lightest one, the most developed, and with the best performance. How many are flying today around the world, do you think? Uh, roughly 160. 160 airplanes. Now you've had a you've had a great response from Norway, I believe. You have a lot of airplanes in Norway, I think. Yeah, uh, Sweden and Norway. It was uh, the first big market we had. Now it's United States, but in the beginning it was there. All right, let me ask Shalom a question because a couple of years ago you made a big announcement. You were going to go uh, find some quarters with our friends not too far that way at Embry Riddle Aeronautical University, the biggest aeronautical university in the world, very well respected by many people. And CMAX has something to do with that. Tell me a little bit about it, Shalom. Right, well, they, they help us with marketing research. We had seven classes from graduate and undergraduate studi students working on that for us. So we were able to, to learn a little bit about how to price our plane in the US, also some logistics to get our planes here, and also uh, what the American customers want in a plane. So from, from that experience, we came up, we, we know, the market is wants the IS engine, so we're offering that now as an option to the US. So that are, that are the information. So you're, stay, you're saying you had students help you with this now, I assume, with one of their, or more, more than one perhaps, of their professors as well. Did they work on this as a class project to learn some things like this? Exactly, for two different semesters, we have multiple classes studying, of course, tutored by the professors and, and uh, we have been involved also with the students. We had several meetings, and at the end of the program, they deliver to us the product, uh, which is you know all the numbers and everything that they were able to gather, and ideas for us to to pursue after that. So it was a great product, great collaboration from Embryo, and we still have our office uh, inside the university, inside their the Micaplex, which is the research park. It's kind of their incubator uh, project, isn't it, where they collect things that multiple companies can use. I think you have access to a wind tunnel there too, right? Exactly, yes. But many labs that they have there. And uh, CMAX as a manufacturer already established in Brazil. Uh, we are uh, using that to, to a step for an acceleration program. Not exactly an incubator, but we are accelerating our... Uh, um, you know, how to enter in the U.S. market now. Okay, Miguel, I want you to tell me a little bit about uh, success of the aircraft on the world market, and then I want to come to Shalom and ask you how it's been going in the USA. So tell me, uh, how has the business been developing in the last uh, few years? Uh, we, Brazilian uh, adopted a new certification very similar to LSA. So about last year, we are very slow because we need to prepare everything to accomplish that legislation. Besides, we have LSA certification in the United States. It's quite different over there. But now we are improving up. We are almost doing a plan a month and increasing next uh, few months. is probably to two a month. Excellent. Yeah. But this is not a company that stands still too long, in my experience. You keep working on new ideas, don't you? Yeah, I'm always working. Uh, personally, I don't like very much the production line, so I work in development stuff. So always I'm developing something. So you spend the money and somebody else earns the money. More or less like that. <laughs> I'm just kidding, of course. Shalom, I want to ask you about in the USA now. I think, what is it, two years in Embry-Riddle, something like that? 
Two years? Okay. So tell me how it's uh, going after two years of effort. First of all, you were just a Brazilian company. You sold some products here. You had some dealers here. And then you decided we need more presence here than just having a dealer. Am I right about that, Shalom? Yes, that's correct. Um, so the company uh, in Brazil, now that we just gain rhythm in the production, uh, we are ab able to come up to the U.S. with some deliveries. And of course, uh, establishing a base in the U.S. Uh, brings the credibility necessary because the customer can talk directly to us. Uh, and and from, from the support standpoint, that's very important. Uh, so this year we'll be able to uh, to deliver some a good quantity of planes here. They will still are selling outside. We have deliveries for Canada this year, uh, in uh, Australia, so on. So it's been a great year for us. Are you able to do, now the product is manufactured in Brazil, uh, so two part question. When you manufacture in Brazil and you bring it here, can you ship from here to other countries like Canada, for example? Yes, we would be able to do that as well. Uh, and the idea for us is um, in the next uh, quarter, start to doing the final assembly of the plane here, adding the engine and the avionics in the US. And possibly, of course, to, uh, to deliver in other countries as well. Okay, yeah, that was the second part of my question is, will you start doing some of it here? So you answered that engines and avionics you would put here. Uh, the avionics are commonly from the USA and the engine comes from Austria. Why send it all over the world if it's coming here anyway, I suppose. Is that right? That's right. And we will uh, we will gain more time in our production by doing that. Because today we have to send everything to Brazil. Sometimes it get uh, stopped in the customs for a while, all bureaucracy and so on. But uh, s just sending the planes here, uh, we just install everything here. It will be easier for us. Uh, do you find the customers uh, pleased to have a U.S. representation? Of course, they, they have someone to talk to here. They want to meet in person, they, you know, so that's the important part, bringing the credibility to, to the business. And of course, once they, they now do not send money to Brazil anymore. We established a company in the U.S. They deal with an American company, of course, owned by Brazilians, but based in the U.S. under Florida Division of Corporations. Excellent. Excellent. So what would you guess is going to be your number of aircraft you put out in the market uh, in 2019 here in the USA, Shalom? At least 12 planes. Uh, we're, we're sparing part of our production to the U.S. We have already some orders that will guarantee that number. Uh, and of course, we, we do not want to stop the other countries that will still have orders. So we need to, we need to spare our production between the U.S. and the other countries. Sure. As to Miguel, you said earlier, the U.S. market is becoming bigger and bigger for you. We're excited about that, of course, but we want other pilots in other countries to also be able to access your uh, your aircraft. You wanted to say something more? Yeah, no, that's exactly what Shalom said. We are really in increasing our production ratio because of the American market. Otherwise, we cannot uh, sell our planes for all the people. So we are working quite good. A lot of work, but things are happening. Well, that's why I wanted to ask if it had been developing, because that's how it works. You don't just start something and it begins to work right away, or at least that's very unusual if that happens. So it takes time. You have to put the effort in, you have to spend the money, you have to put personnel on the job. It's a lot of expense and effort, but it's starting to pay off, you think? Exactly, it is, it is. We're two years that we have been in the U.S., uh, but we, in these two years, we, we have been operating all with positive cash flow and, and surplus in the U.S., so that's good for the business. That's healthy. Good for you. That's always great. It's uh, You have to watch the money carefully. It's easy to spend more than you plan to spend, so good for you for doing that. You must be happy with your U.S. representation here, right? Yes, I am. We have a very good team, not uh, only professionally, but as a, a family almost, you know. That's great. That's great. And I love that little smile you put on at the end of that. You're enjoying this experience. Well, for those that want some more information, uh, please give me a website address and we'll put it up on the screen for people, Miguel. Yeah, it's cmaxaircraft.com. It's easy. Okay, and that'll get us to both the U.S. outfit or the yeah. Brazilian outfit? Okay, so there you go. Much more about CMAX and all kinds of affordable, affordable aviation available on buydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining, Miguel. Shalom and myself here at Deland Showcase 2019. Bye-bye.